Hello, Comedy Store. It's nice to be here. So, uh, woo-hoo, rock and roll, and um, lock and load, let's fuck this mother. Here we go. <laughs> Boom. Trying to be young, despite the fact that I'm quite obviously middle-aged, overweight and balding. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> and if I roll up my sleeves, you might see a little bit of eczema. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, you can scratch it. I don't normally open with that, but that was quite, you know. Still. Well, it's good to be back. Last time I was here, a girl asked me for sex. That's so a disappointer. We had sex. <laughs> Someone over there laughing at the idea that somebody might have asked me for sex. That wasn't, wasn't supposed to be the funny bit in that joke. But nice to see you again. <laughs> I'd, I'd recognise that laugh anywhere. Only tonight is slightly less hurtful. <laughs> but I'm trying to learn to be a more sensitive lover. I got a DVD, How to Improve Your Foreplay Technique. It was really good. I had to fast forward through the boring bit at the beginning. <laughs> I don't know why they bothered with that. Exactly. <laughs> the young couple next door to me have recently made a sex tape. I mean, obviously, they don't know that yet. And all the people who clap that don't live next door to me. So that's, I'm well aware that joke makes me look creepy as fuck, but that's, that seems to be what people think of me. So that's the other day, a woman described me as a bit of a looker. Yeah. Well, voyeur was the actual word she used, but there's no... There's no need to split hairs, is there? I'm a lot sportier than I look. In fact, I picked up a little niggle at the gym the other day. I mean, he pronounces it Nigel. <laughs> That's funny. Every Christmas day, we always have pigs in blankets, or as you probably call it, relatives sleeping in the spare room. <laughs> Did you know that if the entire population of China was to walk past your house in single file, that'd be really creepy? <laughs> really weird. Yeah. I was thrown out of Weight Watchers for making sarcastic comments at the weekly weigh-in. As you can imagine, I accepted the decision with huge grace because they threw her out as well. Anything goes for this crowd. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> I went on a positive thinking course. It was shit. <laughs> Don't know why I bothered you it would be. Never try and use the Ouija board to contact the ghost of a dyslexic. Not a good idea. <laughs> Spirit guide, what is your name? P V L R F. Is that you, Steve? <laughs> Q. Ah, <laughs> uh, so. I was in Liverpool the other day, and what struck me was... You're going to like the first half of this joke, not the second half so much, if I'm being honest.
<laughs> I was in Liverpool the other day, and I have to say, they really are the finest, loveliest people you'd ever, ever know. No, all I mean to say is, I was in Liverpool, and what struck me was a brick. So that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I felt bad now, but not bad enough not to do that joke, clearly, so... In Scotland, the forbidden fruit is fruit. Yeah. Didn't give the Scots any time to jump in on that one. <laughs> in Norfolk, the marriage guidance service is called Related. Uh, some six-fingered clapping from the back on that one, lovely. It's... You could tell that because it was 20% louder. <laughs> I bought an advent calendar for Jehovah's Witnesses, but every door somebody tells you to fuck off. <laughs> the other day, a Jehovah's Witness tried to tell me a knock knock joke, so I pretended I wasn't in. Easy done. <laughs> Old MacDonald had Tourette's. E I E I can't. <laughs> Some for the kids. <laughs> so. um, <cute>. so. <laughs> Are we all okay? Can we move on? <laughs> yeah. so. So, my, my grief counsellor died recently, but luckily he was so good I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> the other day I was doing the hoovering in my pants and I thought to myself, how do my bollocks get this dusty? <laughs> We've all thought it. <laughs> My girlfriend's ass is like a peach. Yeah. Hairy and makes a horrible yoghurt. <laughs> Bringing out some universal truths now. No one likes peach yoghurt, I'm afraid to say. When my granddad was caught trying to stow away in the Merchant Navy, he offered to work his passage, which, as you can imagine, made him very popular. <laughs> Some of you were way ahead of the curve on that one. I like that. I like a smart crowd. When you get a new car, you're paranoid about scratching it. I parked at Asda, and when I came out, there was a big gash on the bonnet. I said, Madam, sit in your own car. <laughs> yeah. And again, you are with me on the gash. That's beautiful. Yeah. That sounds like the sort of thing a footballer would say. I'm sorry. <laughs> Apparently, the least sexy place for a woman to get a tattoo is Middlesbrough. <laughs> it's never a good idea to have sex with somebody in the workplace, is it? Because then you have to see them every day it gets awkward, eventually everybody else finds out, and then you're no longer allowed to teach. <laughs> so, so do be careful. You're clapping that, sir. What you don't realise is it's never a good thing to be the only person clapping a paedophile joke. <laughs> In the age of Operation U Tree, that is enough to get you in severe trouble, but I'd be with you, so it's fine, don't worry. So, I took a poll recently, and 100% of people were quite annoyed that their tent had fallen down. <laughs> this morning I made a Belgian waffle. In the afternoon I made a Frenchman talk bollocks. <laughs> So. The 
president of France said this week that English speakers were arrogant in their refusal to learn foreign languages. At least I think that's what he said. <laughs> but it all just sounded like haw, he haw. He haw. He haw, he haw, he haw. And remember the golden rule, it's not racist if it's about the French. <laughs> I don't know why that's true, I'm just happy to exploit the loophole. Huh. I bought a really nice 12-year-old scotch. I mean, obviously his parents weren't pleased. <laughs> that sounds a lot worse than it used to. That was quite a sweet joke before the whole Savile thing happened. Then it started sounding revolting. But again, I've seen the things you've let, again, let me get away with. I know what he likes, so... Uh, <laughs> if anything, finding out that Jimmy Savile was a paedophile made it even worse that he never answered my letter. Because all of my favourite 70s kids TV stars, they've all been done for it now, haven't they? Jimmy Savile, Rolf Harris, Stuart Hall. I bet Finger Mouse is shitting himself. <laughs> and for the younger guests, yes, there genuinely was a 1970s kids TV series called Finger Mouse. That was, at the time, that was perfectly acceptable. Somebody walked into the BBC and said, I've got a great idea for a series for kids. And they went, all right, well, what do you do? And he goes, well, basically, I finger a mouse. And they went, fuck it, you're hired. Come on in. That's the least sinister thing going on in this organisation right now. Have as many series as you want. So. I went to see the stalactites at Cheddar Gorge and our guide asked us not to try and crack one off and she wasn't even that attractive. but I still managed. <laughs> it was very dark. This morning I went to a meeting in my premature ejaculator support group. Yeah. Turns out it's tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to be deadpan and I'm giggling like a little girl now, sorry. No, but I did suffer from premature ejaculation, which made me feel selfish and bad for my girlfriend. Then she suggested I try this special cream that reduces your sensitivity. And it really worked, because now I don't give a fuck about her. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend and I were in the garden earlier, and we saw the 18-year-old girl next door, all dolled up, ready to go out clubbing. And my girlfriend said, you know what? At that age, I could really see myself in her. Which was weird, because I was thinking exactly the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy old man, well aware. I didn't know what to get my little niece for Christmas, so I asked my sister what she's into, and apparently at the moment she's mad about frozen stuff, so I got her some oven chips and peas. <laughs> uh, they love that shit, apparently. Uh, gonna get her some onion rings for her birthday. <laughs> I like to annoy my Israeli flatmate by giving many posts that's just addressed to the occupier. And the irony of that dividing the room, by the way. <laughs> you got to look after your health as you get older. The other day, I did a poo and noticed there was a little blood in it. I said, oi, bruv, get out of my toilet, innit? <laughs> Sorry. Right. Convincing impression of the youth there. <laughs> I bought some fancy pens at a nudist art shop. Felt tips. No, but touched a couple of bollocks. <laughs> I was in a lingerie shop. I said, are these knickers satin? He said, no, they're new. Cannibals broke into a convent near Coventry. None eaten. Yes, loads of them. (laughs) 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 
I'm having a lovely time, so I'm going to do something cheeky. This is, this is a joke I wrote today, but it might be fun to try it out and see what happens. Uh, I used to work in McDonald's, mostly flipping burgers, but we also sold fucking chips as well. <laughs> Jump the gun a bit on that one, but fuck it, it'll, be, it'll get there. <laughs> I went to the zoo to watch the monkeys wanking. Then I went to watch the crocodiles, and I was still wanking. My girlfriend's dog died, so to cheer her up, I got an identical one. She was livid. What am I going to do with two dead dogs? <laughs> she always says that my problem is I never follow through on projects, so I shat on her stamp collection. <laughs> We're trying for a baby. Her mom's agreed to help out. Just... Yeah, oh, there we go. You're ahead of that. Lovely. You're filthy-minded. I have to say that. That's... Oh, lovely. I just... I'm just going to do the setups for this last couple of minutes. If that's it, you can just fill in the blanks yourselves. That's lovely. I went to a swingers club. Dorman goes, it's £15 to get in. Or you can pay £20. That includes a meal. I paid £20 and went in. Oiled naked guy comes up to me and goes, hello, my name's Emil. <laughs> I went to buy a Christmas tree. The guy said, you're going to put it up yourself? I said, no, I was thinking the living room. A friend of mine said, if I text another man and put a kiss at the end, is that a bit gay? I said, what are you texting him? He said, a picture of my cock. <laughs> Doesn't matter then, do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do a couple where you can fill in the punchlines yourselves, you that kind of crap. The Archbishop of Canterbury recently said that he couldn't support gay marriage without first having a mandate. <laughs> Nan always said that when she was young, she never had to worry about leaving her back door open. <laughs> All right. All right one time I won a teddy bear from one of those, um, what do you call those grabby things you get at the fairground? Gypsies. <laughs> going out with an English teacher, which is a bit awkward because she keeps on correcting my grammar during sex. I'm like, who's the daddy? Who's the daddy? She's no, the daddy's whom. I'm like, suck it good, bitch. She's no, it's suck it well. Bitch. And she gets particularly annoyed at my improper use of the colon. Oh, this has been lovely. Uh, I, oh, here we go. Last thought. I accidentally filled the escort with Diesel. She died. <laughs> you know what it's like when you're wanking off three bus drivers at once and it's taking ages, and then suddenly. <laughs> Keep it up, Yavin Gary. Thank you. Good night. Gary Delaney, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the wonderful Gary.